first time with your family, right? Yeah, we go on all. Yeah. Hey guys, we gotta start. <laughs> Gosh, Mike, we're talking Aggie football. Come on. <laughs> Good evening. It is 6.30, and this is a special meeting of the Rockport City Council held on Tuesday, September 5th, 2023 at 6.30. It is that time. I will ask that you all join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands. The agenda items we have tonight are all interrelated, and we find that they are awful close in subject matter, and I want to see that because they are much alike, there is uh, opportunity that anything that anyone might add or want to say could be misconstrued from one item to the other. We're going to allow people to speak at the time the item is called on the agenda tonight. First is citizens to be heard. We have no citizens to be heard on an item that is not related to the agenda. Let me be sure that's right. Therefore, when the agenda item is called, you may speak at that time. Item number three is under public hearing. We'll have two items on a public hearing. It is 6.32 as public hearing begins. Number three is conduct a public hearing on the city of Rockport fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. We'll do them now. Yep. Go ahead. Patrick Kane, 1123 East Cedar Street, Rockport. I'm opposed to the city's proposed budget. The city should be able to do a better to do better than maintain status quo if it is bringing 12.91% more revenue from property taxes. Yet that is all the city manager has said the city can do with an extra million dollars, which leaves the following unfunded and proposed budget per the city manager. One, drainage. Two, streets. Three, parkland acquisition and development. And four, utility line replacement and expansion. Christy Rutledge, 14. That's, that's not a different agenda item. Can I take a person on this? Yes. Let me speak. Okay. It's on public hearing. Uh, public hearing number three. Number four. I don't know. It says number three. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to replace this from our written comments. Thank you very okay. much. Um, thank you, Mayor, for allowing us to speak on each agenda item. I think that's really important tonight because uh, these are interrelated, but they do affect each one of us here that live here. Uh, the budget uh, public hearing item, I've been here at all the meetings. I followed your budget, budget for years. I'm really concerned about the lack of transparency in this budget. I have been asking uh, every meeting about your capital improvement plan. I have been asking where money has been moved to. Uh, specifically, your American Recovery Plan, $2.8 million that was earmarked for the wastewater treatment plan last year. I have been asking where the $2.2 million that was uh, earmarked for the wastewater treatment plan and other water projects has been allocated, and I have gotten no answers. I um, have not seen your capital improvement plan um, that you are basing uh, much of your budget on be delivered to the public. Uh, it's changed from last year. Money's moved around. The two seven, 2007 bonds um, have been allocated to different things like Concho Street, according to your capital improvement budget, your general fund budget. And Concho Street is uh, a part of the 2020 tax notes. So that's really puzzling. I'm not sure if that's legal. But that's, what the, that's all that it says in the budget, and that's all that we've received. Uh, I did get a photocopy of the capital improvement plan from your day one workshop, and it looks like uh, the downtown Austin Street rebuild has been replaced 
um, as a 2022-2023 um, project, and it looks like the money for the wastewater treatment plant, about the same amount, um, has been allocated to Contro, Contro Street. So I'm really concerned that we're defunding our critical infrastructure. I'm really concerned that there's no transparency with your citizens about what your budget is about. Your capital improvement projects are what will lead us forward for the next five or 10 years. Um, that's what will um, secure our future, our safety, our life, our well-being. I'm very concerned that the Rockport Country Club drainage sediment removal has been removed from your capital improvement budget. This photo that I took, um, there was 2007 bond money allocated for that last year. And on the day one handout, which was not given to the public willingly, um, in an agenda packet, um, and that meeting wasn't recorded, um, that is zeroed out, and I don't understand why. So I think that um, I'd like to see what capital improvement projects you have for general fund and for utilities, and what money is assigned to those. Because you did say that if money's assigned to them, then they need to be um, voted on by council, and I have not seen a vote on those downtown projects. And Does anyone in the audience wish to address item number three in the public hearing? We'll go to item number four. Conduct a public hearing on City of Rockport 2023. Patrick Kane, 1123 East Cedar Street, Rockport. <coughs> I am opposed to the tax increase proposed by the city which the state mandated, mandated disclosure shows as a 16.33% increase in taxes on the average homestead. Please avoid the double speak tonight about how you're reducing our tax rate while blaming the appraisal district for raising our taxes. The city sets the tax rate, not the appraisal district, and your own notice for this public hearing, hearing clearly states that you are proposing a tax increase. Let's also be clear about the rate you proposed as you have had to play games with the unused increment to jack, up, to jack the rate up from basic voter approval tax rate of 0.342 to the proposed rate of 0.360, which is the difference between an effective rate increase of 7.3% and 11.26%. To add insult to injury, the 16.33% increase in taxes on average homestead simply maintains status quo with city services instead of addressing, addressing drainage, roads, and other critical needs. Given that, it doesn't seem like the city is being a good steward of the taxpayer's money. Robin Wright, 1510 Bluebird, Rockport. I am absolutely opposed to the proposed tax uh, excuse me. I am absolutely opposed to the proposed property tax increase. How can you justify this? Many of us in Rockport are already struggling with insurance, fuel prices, etc., and now you want to bury, it, bury us with a huge tax increase. Please reject this increase. Do like we on fixed incomes must do. Stay within the budget you already have. Many of us are having to ask the question of how long can we continue to live in Rockport if this and other increases are voted in. Please consider truly representing your constituents. Consider their struggles. Please vote against this. Robin Wright. We called this item a minute ago. I had swallowed some water and got choked. And when I quit breathing for a second, he started talking. So I want to read what it was we were talking about right there so you have it for the Sorry. record. Conduct a public hearing in the city of Rockport 2023 property tax rate for taxpayers to have an opportunity to express their views on the tax rate. The city of Rockport will adopt the budget and tax rate for fiscal year 2023-2024 on September the 12th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. at the Rockport Service Center, 2751 State Highway 35 Bypass, Rockport, Texas. Does anyone else wish to address, which is that what yours is on? Mine says item four. Item four, go ahead. Uh, Nancy Bolton, 201 Spanish Woods Drive, item number four. I'd like to thank the City Council, Mayor J. Rowe, and City staff that worked on the budget for the City of Rockport. When budgets are discussed, it's very difficult considering the amount of taxes needed to support our local government. My husband and myself support the new budget with exceptions to the residential and commercial water rate increases, which may seem minor, but during an 
inflationary time is drastic and they're struggling to make ends meet. This is a necessity, not a luxury that residents and commercial businesses need daily. Thank you, Nancy Bolton. Anyone else wish to address it? Go ahead. Christy Rutledge, 1411 Dana Drive. I am opposed to the 16.3% tax increase for um, a lot of reasons. Obviously, um, we're um, having 16% tax increases here, 23 to 24% at the county, no telling what the uh, school district is going to come in. Um, I presented to you all, or I tried to, at one of the very first meetings, some handouts on uh, line items within the budget which represent taxation that are not spent year after year. Um, and they, if, if you don't spend something that you're budgeting for, where does it go to? It just goes into nowhere land, just like our American Recovery Plan money has. And now it's reallocated uh, without our knowledge. And so this, propping the budget up with unspent line items is wrong. It's, it's, it's wrong to tax us unnecessarily for things that you do not intend to purchase year after year. And you can go back and look at the budget and you can compare, um, you can download in clear.gov back to 2010, the entire budget book. And there is a lot of line items. So um, the other thing about this tax increase is um, that there's really no justification for increasing any expenses this year. So all expenses should have been leveled out at last year for real expenses or deleted and some hard decisions should have been made um, to keep this tax increase down. You all are elected to serve the citizens of Rockport, not the city. And the citizens of Rockport are going to bear the burden of this tax increase. Yes, we have problems with our utilities and they need to be addressed, but I've been following for three years and they aren't addressed, with the exception of 20-something people that came out or 30 people that came out about the Rockport Country Club were we able to get some action taken on that drainage. But um, basically everything gets kicked down the road every year and it falls into developers' hands and it falls into the first developer that comes into to the room and this is causing a tax increase on us. And we have no idea how the money's spent. Because once this budget's adopted at 16.3%, then it, it goes into fund balances and it gets spent however, however we want. So y'all need to put some limits on it so that we have some honesty and transparency. And you also need to delete those unnecessary budget line items because that is what builds our tax rate. And it's not right to unnecessarily tax us. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this particular item? Katie Jackson, 2205 Monkey Road. First of all, the people that speak in opposition should be losing a lot of weight because they're jumping to conclusions left and right. Having sat in that seat, having had to look at the budget, there is money there that probably is not going to get spent, but it has to be budgeted in case it needs to be spent. Where does that money go? And please correct me if I'm wrong, but that money goes into the general reserves into the reserves. What do the reserves do? The reserves are what kept us from having to take out massive loans after Harvey. The city was able to pay all of their matches to get all of the things that they needed to get done to recover from Harvey immediately after. If we would not have had that money, we would still have trash sitting near my house on 12th. If we would not have had that money, we would still be fighting to get cleaned up. So those line items that don't get spent go into the reserve. I, I do not know what the reserve is right now for days of operation, but it's not 180, which is council policy. I don't even think it's 60. I don't know what it is. But the city does need to move forward Expansion of the of the, uh, of the um, capital capital in the CIP 
to, to a line item so we can at least see what the plan is would be nice. Now, I, we do demand that the council wisely spends our money, which contrary to some believe, we have in the past. I cannot do that anymore, I'm not on council, so I expect you all to do that. I am hoping that you do not lower the proposed rate because the city does need the money. I don't know where the 16% is coming from, I honestly don't. Someday I'll find out, probably jumping to conclusions. I see 12%. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a nice little chunk of change, but there's nothing wrong with it. The truth in taxation covers everything that you're asking for. And that's what state statute is for, which is what you have to operate with, within state statute. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Anyone else want to speak on item number four? If not, we'll close the public hearing. It is 6.46 p.m. We'll call agenda item number five. Deliberate and act on second and final reading of an ordinance amending City of Rockport Code of Ordinances, Chapter 102, Utilities, Article 2, Water Service, Division 3, Service Charges, by amending water rates for all customers, providing for the validity of said ordinance, repealing all prior ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for an effective date. Substantial changes to the proposed ordinance are made. This will serve as the first reading of said ordinance. I have... Christy Rutledge wishing to address item number five.
power meters is just to have a Thank you. Kathy Kane. Kathy Kane, 109 Boardwalk Avenue. I'm opposed to the usury charges for non-city water customers, despite sharing concerns with city staff not justifying the increased rates. I know which way this will end. I heard Councilmember Hatman last week say we need to address the needed improvements, and I agree. I just don't believe it has to happen all on the backs of the non-city customers who make up 41% of your customer base. City residents pay $22.52 and non-city will pay $33.06 per gallon. That's a 47% unsubstantiated usury charge. Your non-city commercial customers face 38% more than their city counterparts. Councilmember Hale said her job is to do what is best for her ward. If that is the case, then who is representing the non-voting customers? According to her logic, none of you are, which is why you're placing the rate increase on the non-city customers. I believe you are peddling lower water rates for votes. Thank you, ma'am. Katie Jackson. Katie Jackson, 2205 Monkey Road. A tax is something paid to a governmental entity for their general use. Police, fire, street and drainage maintenance, employee wages, supplies, gasoline, building and development functions, etc. A fee is paid to, some, to do something or receive, or receive a service which is not available to everyone unless the fee is paid and the person or entity paying the fee has the equipment to receive said service. Licensing fees, franchise fees, water service fees, wastewater service fees, filing fees, building permit fees, impact fees, etc. Um, as usual, it comes down to definitions. Water is a service, therefore, it's a fee. It is not a tax. Period. End of statement. Simple definitions. It's a service. Anybody within the city or outside the city, to the best of my knowledge, can choose to not use city water. I do not know if that's a true statement, but I'm going to go forward th assuming it's true for the minute. My turn to jump. So instead of paying $10 more a month, go ahead and spend $50,000 and drill a well. Kind of sucks when you are in a sole source situation and nobody there's nobody that can give you water except for the city i like my well water i don't want city water but please keep in mind also with your rate increase to the to everybody except in city those rate increases pay for six six entities in specific the time for the city manager on utilities, the time for the finance director on utilities, especially budget season, the time for the assistant to the city manager for project management, grant application, development, dispersal of planned and unplanned outage messaging and other administrative functions, the city secretary for public information request, coordination, collection, preparation and filing of legal documents and other needs. Utilities do not pay for human resources at all. They do not pay for public communications, which is all the necessary emergent communications via code red related to water, wastewater, after hours fielding of calls and dispatching for outages and other issues for water and wastewater. There's where the extra comes from. There is no money in the utility budget for those specific functions, which are necessary for the city to take care of business and inform the citizens and make sure everything is above board. And notice I didn't even put legal in there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Yeah. 
Patrick Kane, 1123 East Cedar Street, Rockport. I am opposed to the surcharge for out-of-city utility customers as it is unjust and not supported with any data. At the last meeting you learned the city couldn't attribute any added costs for delivering utilities outside the city limits, yet you doubled down and increased the out-of-city surcharge from 38% to 47% for the base water service and from 40% to 50% for each additional 1,000 gallons of water used. This represented a 10.4% rate increase for out-of-city customers while asking the in-city residential customers to pay only 3.6% more. In-city commercial customers also saw a 10% rate increase, which represents a new 6.2% surcharge on top of the residential rate. Please do the right thing. Treat all customers fairly and equitably by either eliminating or severely reducing the rate surcharges. Before any action taken by the council or any discussion by council, we will establish the presence of a quorum by roll call. Ward 1? Here. Ward 2? Here. Ward 3? Here. Ward 4? Here. Mayor? Here. We do have a quorum. Deliberate and take action on second and final reading. We'll read this again so we've had a lot of discussion here. Deliberate and take action, second and final reading of an ordinance amending the City of Rockport Code of Ordinances. Chapter 102, Utilities, Article 2, Water Service, Division 3, Service Charges, by amending water rates for all customers, providing for the validity of said ordinance, repealing all prior ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for an effective date. If substantial changes to the proposed ordinance are made, this will serve as the first reading of said ordinance. Council, do you have questions? Just to make one comment, um, and I just want to make sure that's kind of just kind of come tied together. Um, when we say that the Human Resources Fund is being paid out of our general fund to fund these utilities, that's coming from ad valorem taxes, which is coming from city residents. So when we look at raising the rates on outside, because they're not paying that inside city residents' rates, they're paying just the one fee. So they're getting the same kind of um, services that in-city is by paying just that one fee as of the in-city. So me personally, I just look at it as it actually is more comparable with each other because they're paying those two fees. So I just that's I want to make that comment there. Are there other questions? Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve agenda item number five as read. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, we'll call for a vote. Ward 1? Nay. Ward 2? Aye. Ward 3? Aye. Ward 4? Aye. Mayor, aye. Passes 4 to 1. Item number 6, deliberate and act on second final reading of an ordinance amending the City of Rockport Code of Ordinances, Chapter 102, Utilities, Article 3, Wastewater Service, Division 4, Service Charges, by amending wastewater rates for all customers, providing for the validity of the ordinance, repealing all prior ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for an effective date. If substantial changes to the proposed ordinance are made, this will serve as the first reading of said ordinance. You got one? Yes, sir. Hello, uh, Patrick Kane, 1123 East Cedar Street, Rockport. I'm opposed to the surcharge for out-of-city wastewater customers as it is unjust and not supported by, with any data. Because of a 42% out-of-city rate surcharge, the out-of-city residential customers are disproportionately impacted by your 12% rate increase and have to pay $3.92 more per month for their base service compared to the extra $2.73 uh, per month in-city residential customers will pay. The only consolation for the out-of-city residential customers is they aren't commercial customers, since you raise their rates by an astronomical 27%. You may have a legitimate need to raise rates. However, you need to do the right thing and treat all customers fairly and equitably. An unsupported, uh, egregious out-of-city rate surcharge and not just and is not just and should be either eliminated or severely reduced. Christy Rutledge. Utility rate increases are not justified. 
by any projects that have been presented to the public um, in a public meeting. I don't know what you all are talking about privately in your emails or in your workshops that aren't recorded. Uh, man, I know you are, but you're not telling the public what uh, capital improvement projects are there to support these utility rate increases. This is our third year, huge rate increases for the wastewater treatment plant. And um, word on the street is there's big problems there, but that project's been defunded. Uh, there was $336,000 spent projected for 22-23 for all of the utility uh, capital improvement projects, but there was $5.8 million budgeted. You have no idea what you're doing next year, but you've budgeted $4.9 million. We have no idea for what. Uh, so these rate increases are not justified. Uh, the prior year, 21 to 22, you spent around 600, uh, you had $600,000 surplus in your utility um, uh, capital improvement plan. So to say that these um, weight, uh, rate increases are necessary to support your capital improvement plan are just wrong. It's just a lie, okay? Because what I find back in the budget are uh, new water extensions, new wastewater extensions, uh, uh, First Street to Gagon, uh, First Street to wherever. You're trying to get down to 188 for a, a big project uh, down south of uh, the city, outside of the city limits. But I don't see anything about repairing our current infrastructure. I see on the uh, chart that was put up here that we couldn't read. There was no handouts given on it. You had all these different boxes that was keying in real time what the rate increases would be. A little note down at the bottom that said $14 million or $16 million in bonds would be taken out for utilities. For what? You're transferring the money out of utilities through things like franchise fees. Why are you charging your City of Rockport residents and your utility customers a franchise fee for a utility that the city owns. That's something you would charge like um, a cable company or um, a phone service, but not something that you own. Uh, and so uh, in general fund admin and uh, general fund building and development, you're taking money out of our utility accounts and you're raising the rates on us, but you have no projects to support your rate increases. So I would like some transparency with Council, questions? There are no questions, do I have a motion? Move to approve item six. That's presented. I have a motion, do I have a second? No second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'll call for a vote, Ward one? No. Or two? Aye. Or three? Aye. Or four? Aye. Mayor, aye. Passes four to one. Item number seven. Deliberate and act on first reading of an ordinance to the City of Rockport approving the assessment and renditions for 2023 taxable property as submitted by the appraisal district, levying a tax rate for $100 valuation for the City of Rockport, Aranges County, Texas for the tax year 2023 of 0 0.213583 for the purpose of maintenance and operation and 0 0.146495 for payment of principal and interest on debt for the city and that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 0 0.360078 which is effectively a, an 11.26% increase in the tax rate providing for a lien on all real and personal property to secure payment for taxes thereon, containing a severability clause, repealing all ordinances and parts thereof in conflict herewith, providing for an effective date. This tax rate will raise more taxes for maintenance and operation than last year's tax rate. This tax rate will effectively raise by 12.82% and will raise taxes for maintenance and operation on a $100,000 home by approximately negative $6.93. I have one person, Christy Rutledge. 
Did she leave? Okay, she's gone. Never mind, she's not here anymore. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to say that, of course, the, this is the first reading of the ordinance uh, that's been used to support this 2023-2024 uh, budget book. Uh, and budget is approaching $56 million. Um, so that's what this has all been built on, and uh, we really appreciate your support. Okay. Questions, Council? So let's just go back just real quick, because we had a couple customer or a couple citizen questions, and we just want to make sure we address those so they get their things. So let's talk about the, the, the ARP funds with the wastewater. The ARPA funds? Yes. So the wastewater treatment plant will be advertised. It's been advertised last week. It's, I think it will be advertised next week. It should be bid. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. I'm sorry. It should be bid and built, and construction will start at the end. And at those the funds are still being They're, taken away. Nothing like, has changed. Nothing There's, changed it's still the ARPA funds and unused bond funds that will fix it. The Not information coming. that you just received is completely incorrect. Okay. Nothing's been unfunded. No. Look like I, I didn't see that in the CIP plan that it was it's funded. So. Right, so the so. CIP plan and the unused bond funds are different items. Correct, yeah. So if it's unused bond funds or the ARPA funds that y'all had when we, when I got here, that is a separate fund. Those funds have now been isolated and they are being spent on the projects that you approved. Correct. The CIP plan is what you have there in front of you. That's what we will fund either through debt or for through utility rates. And we have, even through utility rates right now, we're not able to fund any of those projects because we're still running. You're still running in the hole. We're still running in the hole, even if with the rate increases. Just even with the rate that. increases, you will not raise enough revenue to fund the capital improvement plan. So right now we're just trying to play catch up is what we're going Right. Yes. So right now you will still be taking out of your reserves to fund the utilities. And to, to Put that back out here because we have some new faces in the crowd. Uh, our reserves are what again? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I don't have that offhand. Um, I believe uh, yeah. during the budget it was about two to three. I'm sorry, so in the utility fund. For both reserves, so the utility fund, and then we can talk about the general fund because right now we're talking about the tax rate. Okay, so projected at the end of this coming fiscal year, our utility fund will have gone down from 163 days of working balance to 90. So that's at 7 million down to 5 million, correct? That's correct. Okay. 7.2 down to 5.4. Which means we're not even building our reserves, we're lowering the reserves down, even correct. with a rate increase. Correct. So the CIP projects that um, are speaking of, we can't even manage to do those as of right now. You so have to raise your CIP, pro you have to raise your rates enough to generate one million dollars in excess revenue above our fees mm -hmm. in order to pay the debt service on the proposed bond if you do not if you choose to just fund pay as you go you would need to raise i think 1.5 million hold on i'll tell you this is i believe nice. you're close to that number it you would have to raise um uh, yeah 1.5 yeah but you also did not, were not able to do any last year, so um, you're, you're behind on that. Yes. But anyway. So continue. the point is we're behind. And um, just to kind of put that right now, so the money that we're spending even on the utilities and all this stuff, this is just for expenditures alone. This is not to do any extra projects, not to do anything on top of that. So what, my, and I just want to make sure that these questions are answered. Another thing that was brought up with um, the country club, we spent almost 900000 in the country club last year, and we did use unspent money to clean out sediments, and we did um, utilize those funds appropriately where they were supposed to. So I just want to make sure I clarify that and make sure that that statement is out there right now because that is not exactly what happened. Um, and so the I just want to make sure. The country club project was finished, the drainage yep. and the, bond, the sediment clean out. Yes. But that money for the sediment was not redirected to any other project. It was used for what it was supposed to be, and it was allocated for. So Correct. I just wanted to make sure that comment was also there. Correct. So right now I am done. And what else am I done? We also have about, as I recall, $3 million of work about to be done on the wastewater treatment plant. Yes, sir. That's what's going to bid, and that's what's the unspent bond funds and the ARPA money. We'll, we'll fund that. So that's construction should start. In October, um, 
we have not done the um, unspent bond projects as quickly as we would like to, but I have, um, we have spent some time isolating that money whereby it previously had been intermingled. And so um, the finance team has isolated it and ensured that every dollar is there. And um, so we've been kind of spending those slowly while we're um, isolating those. But I, that has been done and every project on the unspent bond fund will either be started or completed in this coming year, one of the two. And we did have a two-day two, two day workshop where we did go line by line, each one of our councils, and had time to go line by line. And we took that time and we took the energy and, you know, made sure that we looked at every line item and make sure they were not spending anything more than they needed to. Um, there was one thing that um, I'm just going to, you know, make sure that is in head front is, again, the one thing that we did not like to see was the having money, like especially in the drainage and the and stuff like that still left over at the end of the year. Make right. sure that's being spent where it needs to be spent and making sure these projects, if we have the money to get done, are being um, allocated in the correct way. And doing Any that, money so. allocated for maintenance will be spent. Yeah. That I think that hasn't been a previous philosophy. I think we understand now that that is where that money will go. I don't have a problem. I, and I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm sorry for that. But we, we've, changed, we've changed philosophies. It's absolutely necessary that we maintain our infrastructure for the city, and, and we are doing everything we can with this budget to do that. We're trying to see that wastewater treatment streets and everything that we have are maintained because we owe that to all the citizens. All of them. <laughs> Other questions? No, I'm good. I appreciate uh, Councilwoman Atman's comments and um, clarifying some of the uh, inaccuracies that were provided during public hearing. Um, with regards to the unspent maintenance fund, I think that was exceptionally clear in our workshop of what our expectation is for staff to get that taken care of, and, and I, I trust that there's a plan to get that done. So I don't have anything to add, Mayor. Mayor, just one, one more comment. Uh, I appreciate the fact that, that staff pumped the brakes a little bit and went through it, and, and we're going to try to move forward correctly uh, so that we don't find. Uh, some more than unspent bond money, you know, those little nuggets that we keep finding. Uh, and, and I appreciate the fact that y'all spent so much time working through that so that we, we try to get it right, C correct some of the, uh, the wrongs that we we found. So I appreciate that greatly. Um, and just one other thing. Um, can you just explain the, the $1 million in uh, water meters, please? Just clarify for that. Sure. Mike has been through this before, but there is a back order and a... Um, backlog on orders for the type of water meter and endpoints that we need. Um, we put in $1 million to buy them because we have to order and purchase and we don't know when we will get and receive and be billed. That is a revenue neutral item. So we have a million dollars budgeted in there, but we will receive that million dollars back when the meters are purchased. We don't give those away for free. So there's a revenue offset we only put in 50% revenue because that's all we think we can sell, but we feel like we need to get ahead on the ordering. So even if we don't receive 100% of the revenue in this fiscal year, we would receive it in the next fiscal year, whereby we also may not spend that much in this fiscal year. It's just going to depend on when they drop the meters off and say, you get 100 and you might not get a hundred for another six months. So and here's your bill. So you here's have, your bill, so right? You have, and so you have, have to budget. pay. So, so that is a revenue neutral item, but it's a tricky one just because of the supply chain. So, thanks for asking about that. With our tap increases on that, uh, will that make it non-neutral? But maybe. Uh... So we will cover our cost. Um, we figured up we were losing seventy five seventy five dollars for every tap. We increased the $75 and then added 10% administrative fee to cover basically the paperwork for every tap. Um, it's not going to be a profit, but we will not continue to lose money. Okay. So now we're just catching up again. We're, we're filling the hole, gotcha. Brad. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Other questions or comments? If not, do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve agenda item number. Do I have a second? 
So does this one need to be read? That the, the yeah. tax rate. Do you want me to read the tax no, rate out? Just tell me we have to have a roll call vote. Yeah. 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 Oh, I didn't say. Well, let me say agenda item seven because I didn't say that. Sorry. Um, I make a motion to approve agenda item number seven as read. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions or debate? Uh, we will have a roll call vote as required. Ward one? Aye. Ward two? Aye. Ward three? Aye. Ward four? Aye. Mayor, aye. Unanimous. Any other thing to come before the council this evening? What's no adjourned. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? We're adjourned. <laughs>